The Honorable Kamala Prasad Bissessa and Dr. Gregory Bissessa, members of Parliament, Senators, members of the Executive of the United National Congress, our very hard-working Member of Parliament, Michel Benjamin, officers of the party, brothers and sisters, all assembled tonight in such huge numbers. I think now there are more people outside of our main hall than we have inside this hall. So I feel I should address the mass of people who are really outside and we are very sorry that what appears to be hundreds of you have to stand, but I'll see if I make it interesting for you. We also want to welcome our friends, activists, supporters abroad, our good friend Norbert in Canada, Patricia Ricardo in New York, others throughout the Caribbean, Europe, wherever our supporters are, tune in tonight on the various platforms, brothers and sisters. This evening I'm here to speak for a few minutes. I want to take the opportunity to raise just about two issues with you, but to reinforce a point that Jolene and Annel Roberts were making before, that we must at all times remember that this country during the period 2010 to 2015 experienced unparalleled prosperity, opportunity, it was a period when everything worked. It was a period when everyone worked. We must return to the days of Kamla Pasad Bisesa and the United National Congress. I ask you to just think. In those days, in that period, you had water. You had roads. We invested in drainage. So we did not have this type of flooding. You could have opened your door and look out. You could have sit down in the gallery. In the evening, enjoy a cup of tea. Today, what are you? You are in a cage in your home. And some people are now designing their home to have a cage in the cage. It is so bad. This is where this country is today. Nothing works and no one in government works. Look at the cable barriers on the highway. We had cable barriers when we were there. Today, Rohan Sinanan and the bunch of them, they cannot even fix or repair cable barriers on the highway to save lives. Because your life don't matter. Your life don't matter. And when they cannot get a little money to fix a cable barrier, to work in the hospital to prevent bacterial infection of babies, I said in Parliament on Friday, and I'll say it on the platform, I just go to court every week these days. If your job is to protect babies, infants in the hospital, if as Minister of Health, your job is to protect the health of babies and seven babies die, then effectively you are a baby killer. You are? If that is your job, we depend on you to provide that environment for the wellness and the health of babies, of infants, of children, seven and the minister came in parliament and you know what was his attitude? Um, we sorry. He sorry. Then when we pressed him further, his explanation is what you're quarreling, quarreling for. Plenty baby, I'm healthy. That is, the, that is the most unbelievable response. That they will respond to the crisis, this catastrophe, without a heart. I think if you open this man or be chest, you will find a black hole. You cannot have a heart to allow that to happen. Brothers and sisters, but I will deal more with that another time. Tonight, I wanted to raise with you that this government has been in office for nine years or so. They have wasted and squandered hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. And I will show you tonight just one recent example. In the parliament on Friday last, we received a written response to what is called question number 42. Question 42 filed in the name of the Member of Parliament for Arapuch East. We asked the Prime Minister only for three years. We were interested in three years. Could you tell us what was the course of your travel? You know this fellow just come back to Trinidad to change the clothes and go back. But we were concerned with that because when you do that, you spend money. And you spend taxpayers' money. The hospital don't have a tablet. The police station don't have a little notepad to um, write report. They don't have toilet paper. In the, in the, everything gone through. 
the prime minister's office sent a, a letter, uh, a response. In 36 months, Keith Rowley made 19 official visits. In 36 months, which is three years. Brothers and sisters, I will tell you the summary and then we'll get to the detail. He spent $10.6 million in three years in travel. In travel. That works out to $300,000 per month. $300,000 per month Keith Rowley spends on travel in the last three years. We ain't going back to 2015 and thing yet. This is where your money went when they don't have re basic equipment in ministries, when they cannot provide you with a food card, a hamper. When you come into Lengua, I coming this evening through Lengua, I had to ask the driver, say, you sure that we on the road? At any time, I thought the thing would have dropped from the arm um, ceiling like in them plane, you know, when there's a change of pressure. Let us drop something from the ceiling. I look and I thought in the van it would have dropped. I couldn't believe these roads. You cannot get money to fix roads in these areas. But $10.6 million. And I give you just a couple small examples. Keith Rowley. This one is a nice one. He went to St. Vincent. You all remember in St. Vincent there was a meeting with Maduro. And they called President Erfan Ali, Mr. Maduro, and others for a little meeting to discuss their problem. Keith Rowley decided he going to that. Now, what he gone there to do, we don't know. But you know, one day in St. Vincent cost $75,000. A ticket to St. Vincent is about $3,000. It cost this country $75,000 for a one-day trip of the Prime Minister to St. Vincent. Brothers and sisters, he went... He went to something called round table discussions with a congresswoman discussing banking in Barbados. That meeting was effectively one day, two day travel, one day meeting. It cost the taxpayer $127,000. Here is one World Leader Summit taking place in Scotland and London, October 31st and November 6th. If you take away traveling days, four days. 1.1 million dollars in four days gone i continue oh strategic energy briefing session hosted by proman in zurich then he traveled to amsterdam then he traveled to london now he's always traveling with pat pastu who is the guy from around the world in 80 days the the the, the caddy so this money i telling you is for rowley is not for what Anel refers to as what? Yeah, it's not him. <laughs> this is for Rowley alone because, in fact, I believe with his size, instead of carrying him and buying a seat, you could put him in the overhead compartment <laughs> and save the taxpayer some money. Just put him in the overhead compartment and he go everywhere. You don't pay for that. So they went to, to Proman in, in London and so on. Here this one. September 3rd to 10th, that's seven days, but you're traveling, huh? So five days, $1.3 million. $1.3 million Keith Rowley spent for that trip. <laughs> he went to Georgetown. Yeah, this one, Georgetown, Guyana, February 14th, Valentine's Day, to February 17th. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I had life, huh? <laughs> he went to, he went on Valentine's Day to Georgetown. They spent two days, two days in Georgetown, six hundred and fifty-one thousand dollars. The classic now. I reached the classic, or should I give you one or two more? More. The crowd say more. He went to London again in December second, my birthday, to December sixth. December 6th, to, uh, 2nd to 6th, four days, but you're traveling, huh? So effectively, it's three days you're working. He went in December 2023 to London to see Atlantic LNG by the office. Well, that cost $664,000. That was the cost of that. But here is one, and I'll end this segment because I have to get to two other things here. He went in May 11th to May 17th. Fellow went May 11th to May 17th to receive a doctor of letters from Howard University. 
they decided to give him a doctor of letters. That's some personal thing, I think. You, you, you get, call yourself PhD. His friend gave him that, yes. Pretty hard drunk, PhD. So he, he goes there now, and he gets this PhD, and he then tells us, remember this, uh, we raised this issue in parliament. He said when he's there, he's going to meet high-level officials. Now they were running from Starbucks to McDonald's to look for anybody in a jacket and tie and take a picture. That was their idea of high-level, high-level officials. They can't tell you who. Once the person wearing a decent suit, a silk tie, and a big towel in the pocket, they meet. So they go on to do that. Do you know it costs the taxpayer four hundred thousand dollars for Keith Rowley to go to collect his Doctor of Letters from Howard University? That is a personal thing. I don't want to call name and say nothing. We had a case once. The Prime Minister decided that nobody should be traveling to collect any personal, uh, you know, award and so on. Personal awards are good. That is great. We welcome that. But the taxpayer ought to not to be paying for that. Four hundred thousand dollars this man spent going for that. We have some more examples. He had a trip between January 29th to February 1st. I don't know how much days it are between January 29th to February 1st, huh? But he had he went on a trip with that too. Yeah, there's a trip recorded for that too. Spent over four hundred thousand dollars. Over four hundred thousand dollars, brothers and sisters. That is how they were spending money. That was a meeting of here this. We made a big thing out of this too, I remember. A meeting with high-level officials of the United States. January 28th to February 1. How many days is that? I don't know. Anyway, it was $818,000. This, I want to assure you, we will investigate this further. And every one of those trips, we will file questions. We will file freedom of information to find out who did you meet? What was the agenda? Who invited you? They just go uninvited everywhere, you know. And then rack up this bill. The other matter I wanted to raise with you, related as well. They have, we have been raising a matter in Parliament. It, re, it, it concerns a lobbying firm in the United States, Washington, called DC LLC. But there's a fellow named Arthur Collins, called Art Collins, who runs it. And since December 2015, they have been paying him per month, I can say it now, 100,000 United States dollars per month. They have paid over 66 million TT dollars, 100,000 US a month in US currency. And you know what his job is? Organize meeting. Who organizes meeting tonight? Will you get 10 US dollars? Huh? 100,000 United States dollars. I have the latest contract in my hand. Another two years they have signed between the Ministry of Finance and DC company in America. It is now dated, brothers and sisters, the, 20, the first 24th of January 2024, recently. They signed a three-year contract from January, again, for 2.7 million United States dollars to be paid 100,000 US per month going to a man who does go to New York to say he organizing diaspora. My brother and sister could organize that. Them could organize them kind of meeting and thing. You go on there to pay 100,000 and this is the corruption we face. When we raise this in parliament, Rowley say I know him but he's not working for the PNM. This is how they intend to fund their political campaign. 100,000 US per month and this is the latest contract, January 2024 for three years but i assure him mrs Prasad bisesa has what they call that a machine where put paper and a shred a shredder she has a shredder and this contract should go in the shredder we must terminate this nonsense of giving people we have a mission in the united states washington new york miami and so on their job is to promote trinidad and tobago we don't give people a hundred thousand dollars per month to promote Trinidad and Tobago. This is the indecency. We have asked questions after question in the parliament. Myself, Mrs. Passad, Bissess and others have asked questions on this. And this is sheer corruption, brothers and sisters. So we have other speakers, of course. We have other issues. All I will do is encourage you at this time to keep firm, keep strong. Your party is a party with a vision, a party that stands for justice, 
equality and national unity. We are strong and getting stronger. We won the local government elections, whatever they say we won. We will win the general elections whenever it is called. I ask you, brothers and sisters, do not, do not consume, do not consume the narrative of the PNM and vomit out their rhetoric. Do not consume their narrative and vomit their rhetoric. That is not your role. That is not your role. You are to be strong and united and recognize that we are now within touching distance of government. We need two more seats and we have them and we have more in the bag and we will not be distracted. Thank you. God bless you.